all and welcome to my kitchen. I am Jessica Lynn Hart, your chef for today. I hope you make me a chef for life. I am coming to you with a new recipe using my Pampered Chef Quick Cooker. And today's recipe, today's mission for us is to cook a barbecue sandwich and I'm doing this for lunch, so if you need to do it for dinner, you may want to add more meat. So I have a um, just a roast here that I'm going to cut. This is our uh, Santuki knife. I love that knife. Um, I would prefer to use kitchen shears by Pampered Chef, but um, my kids have made an escape for them. I had about three pairs and they're all gone. They use them for other things besides cooking because they are just the best scissors ever. So what we're gonna do first is baste, baste and cut. So I'm going to use maybe like a serrated edged knife and it's called a tomato knife. That's when you pause. And so I'm just going to kind of cut these in squares. It seems to cook better in the quick cooker if the meat is cut. So I am now taking time to cut or pre-cut before I use meat in my quick cooker. And to make, you know, to make things easier, it would... It, The thinner the cut of meat, the faster it cooks. And that's the goal, is to be in and out of the kitchen in 45 minutes or less with prep time and clean up. While this is cooking, I usually clean up my kitchen so that I can eat with my family around the table and pray um, quicker. I know after, after we eat, cleaning up the kitchen is the last thing I wanna do. And often it sits till the next morning. So I'm gonna get my chef um, tongs, and I like these because they're gravity um, controlled. The little there's a little spring that falls, and then falls the other direction when you want to open, and when you want to close. So we want to, and then I'll give it a little um, press. So we can put each piece in here, like so, and it's a little connected, and that's all right. And I'm gonna fill this dish. This um, sealable Pamper Chef square dish, glass dish, makes it great for marinating. So what we wanna do is, it, you could marinate this. And I do not have Pamper Chef Smoky Rub, so I just picked a, another type of, of rub and I'm gonna use my little adjustable measuring spoon that I had way over there. And this measures one, so I'm gonna do about a half of this rub, which would be about two teaspoons. And I'm just gonna kind of shake it on that and reserve. ahead and put the, all these pieces in here. I don't think it'll hurt it a bit because we're going to kind of use our tongs to turn it around. All right. There is that. A little bit of smoky rub. And then Pampered Chef has bell seasoning. I love bell peppers. So we're just going to kind of move it around. And if you're one that does not like to um, put your hands on meat, Use your chef tongs to kind of pick up the meat and turn it so that you get it nice and coated with the spices. Now I'm going to put on the lid, the leak-proof lid, and it just snaps just like that. I'm gonna set this aside. And this is about five years old. Next, I would like to add a cup of um, mixture of melody of peppers. All we have to do is turn that to get it off. I'll, well, I haven't already, so I need to set this to sear, which really means skillet. So this pressure cooker is a skillet, a deep 
a pressure cooker and a slow cooker. And I'm gonna kind of take the salad tongs again and mesh up my peppers. So they're still a little frozen. In times like these, all we need is a savior. Okay, and then I'm going to peel and slice an onion. And so what you wanna do is you wanna go beyond the, the um, peel here to get to keep, to make sure, and you wanna cut in an angle. And then I like to flip and cut in an angle. And what that does is it keeps the phosphorus from smelling. And that phosphorus is what makes your nose run and what makes your eyes leak. And I hate that. So I'm going to do it like so. The kitchen sink is going to be my trash can. And I have to um, clean and disinfect that with five people in my family. So it'll be all right. Put um, a little bit of stuff in there because I don't have my trash can pulled like I should. Now I'm going to teach you a um, hopefully show you a couple different ways to cut an onion. Yes, you could use the Santuki knife and, and just chop your heart away, or you can use the um, simple slicer. Um, it has a groove so that it will stay put on that pan, and we have a um, food saver, and it saves your fingers, and you want to put your onion, you just push. I don't know if you can hear that freshness when I push, and I'm going to turn it so that I can hold the handle, and I'm going to put it on a two, and just cut away, okay? And then that's what you would do if you want to use your simple slicer. Another way to cut is to use um, the food processor. I like the food processor because I don't have to worry about my fingertips getting cut. Notice that there is a little um, hole here in the top and you want to keep that clean because the end of the, the base has to go in that hole. So you wanna keep that clean. So I'm gonna use the Santuki knife and I'm just gonna cut this in four. I'm not crying because I got all of that soft um, phosphorus gathered up. And I'm gonna put, you know, just try to kind of keep it even. Um, no rhyme or reason, just to even it out. And that lines up right here with this. <laughs> I have a new one, but the old one works. I actually have two old ones. Um, and then you just push down and you can hear it working. You can make this as diced as you want. But it doesn't really have to be diced for the um, thing that we're cooking. We just want it um, small enough to kind of get a good stir fry going. And so I forgot to push play. Huh. Now it talks to me, it tells me it's coming on. And we'll rake that off with our skinny scraper. Take out the middle. This is the part you get cut on, so you don't want to put it down in your sink. Kind of lay it off to the side so that when you're washing dishes, that you do it last. And when you use the skinny scraper, it scrapes out everything. You don't, there's none left. And I'm so thankful that someone taught me that trick with the onion. Onions are my least favorite thing to cut in the whole wide world. I cut, I cut up about, um, six onions for the food um, homeless meal at church uh, and I was crying and everything. I wish I'd known that trick when I was um, cooking at the pantry. Now I'd like to do some garlic and I have my garlic press for that. It's really easy. You put a clean piece inside. If you don't have a clean piece, we have um, these are little rollers, and all you do is put the piece down inside and roll it, and the little um, wrappings come right off. For this recipe, I'm just going to do um, two. One, two. We do have a garlic slicer. I don't have one here. 
that um, you can actually slice the garlic if you prefer sliced instead of crushed. We're gonna use this again in a minute, so I'm gonna lay it aside. I'm gonna go ahead, these are um, heat safe, these scrapers, which make it nice. Kind of give those a rub around. Very nice. It's not hot yet, so I'm just giving it a rub around. When it gets hot, it'll sizzle, and that's when you know it's hot, but the base does not get hot. So we're in good shape. So what I'm gonna do next is add back in our meat, and it just pop, pop, and pop, pop, and that's it. Dump in our meat. Voila, and give it a swirl. Try to get those onions on top of the meat and green peppers and banana peppers and bell peppers and whatever peppers that you like. Give it a good stir, trying to coat the uh, top of our meat, just slightly coat like the, le like the uh, left side. And then we're gonna add two secret ingredients. Um, the two secret ingredients uh, is um, soda pop, and soda pop that is um, not diet, regular soda pop, will add a caramelization to the meat. If you use diet, it won't work because there's not enough sugar. And so we're going to do at least two, two cups. And this is our silic, one of our silicone uh, measuring cups. Um, you can see inside the measurements, which makes it nice. You don't have to go like this and line it up. You can just pour the soda and all of that fizz is what we want. And it is now sizzling, our pot's now sizzling, which makes it great. Some people like to sear their meat before they cook it. And that's kind of what we're doing. This is a uh, root beer. And we're also going to do two cups of root beer. Have to put that in the refrigerator for later. All right. It doesn't have to be an exact science. Next, I'm going to use our one cup um, measuring silicone measuring bowl and put in some beef stock. You could do two cups if you would like. If you're using more meat, this is about a three pound roast. So if you're doing meat, if you're going to do six pounds, you would want to double your liquid. Okay. So we're gonna let that just continue to sear. Now, everybody likes some kind of side with their um, barbecue sandwiches. So today, we are going to continue and uh, make some mashed potatoes. So this is our um, ceramic pot and a silicone lid. And we're going to do some potatoes, cut and slice some potatoes. Now, my potatoes, I don't care if if I leave the peeling, but um, my kids prefer the peeling to be off. So in that in that event, we um, will use our um, veggie peely, our veggie peel, our vegetable peeler. There we go to um, peel our potatoes before we add them to the pot. And very quickly, I wanted to show you a few ways of cutting your potatoes. Um, this, <laughs> 10 years old, okay? So I, have, I had to get a um, Pepper Chef sharpener. And all you have to do is lay it flat. Um, this is not the cutting part. So I don't wanna sharpen the top because if I sharpen the top and then breaks my hand over it, I may get um, cut. So I'm gonna flip this over very easy. If you have an old one or if you need a new one, we can we can hook you up with that. Um, and then I'm going to take, let's see, this is a, this is for knives. I'm gonna use the 
the smooth knife, the knife side. And then it has a just like a little scissors and each little grain, each little grain, you just go back and forth on. So I've already done this, I've already sharpened it. So we're gonna use our veggie peeler to um, take off the skin. And I love it because you're not gonna get cut. You, it is possible to get cut, but I've been using this for a very long time, many, many years, and never have I gotten cut. And then we're gonna use the apple wedger to cut the potato. All right, I'm gonna put those peelings to the side just because I do not have my trash can. And since I'm short, I have to get on my tippy toes a little bit. So I was gonna look a little harder than it is. So I line that potato up in the middle and I'm gonna do a rock motion with my hands. Rock like the ocean. And I'm gonna do down and down and push. So that was very easy for a little person like me to do. Even children can do it. I don't like to touch it with my fingers at all. So I'm just gonna kinda of push it through with the back of anything, push it through, just to get all the potato out. You could wait and throw part of that out. So then in the ceramic pot, we can make it real easy on ourselves and lift up our um, prep mat and slide right in. I also have this great little handy scraper and these are to die for when you're cleaning um, pans and pots. So that is one way to cut. Let's go ahead and um, do another one. Very simple, very easy. And you can always use your paring knife to do this. We have a bad spot in our potato. Just cut that out just a second. I like the tomato knife, that's my favorite. It has a shredded edge on it. This happens to be a steak knife. When I'm cutting, I never put my thumb up here to kind of use it. You always use a rocking motion with that. So again, I'm going to use this. It has little, it has a feature here that it's a non, it doesn't slide on surfaces. So if I wanted to, I could slice my potato, and I'm guilty, I'd go like this. But when you go like that, you also might go like that and get your thumb, which, you know, I've gotten my fingertips before. So what you do is you put it in your little slice. And I'm gonna hook it, because it's easier on this, and just kind of go to town. And the, that's a simple slice, and that's a simple wedge. Um, you can also just use the Santuki knife. Again, you have to watch your fingers. Bad piece there. Let's use the simple scrape to pick it up this time. Just a um, paper chef little thing and then you can just dump it. That makes it handy. And it's a priceless kind of a tool that you might put in your own kitchen. A lot easier than trying to get this left hand, that half I can feel, to kind of help me guide it in. Very pretty. I want to kind of use the serrated edge on this one because this potato looks like it has seen better days. I don't like the outside peeling on that at all. I have given up my subscriptions to Blue Apron and to um, Hello Fresh, and this is what was left out of that one of the kits that I had bought from them because now that I have the tools, the right equipment to use in the kitchen, um, I can certainly cook those meals without that extra price to pay for gourmet food. And I'm going to use this again so you can see it twice. I'll hold this pot up so that you can see them. And then to release, you just push that and it comes right on out, that bottom piece. And so your potatoes kind of look like that, which is nice.
Now, I always like a little garlic in my um, potatoes. That just makes it taste more like restaurant food. And so I have some garlic pieces. And we'll see what we can do with our garlic press. Oh, there's a little piece of paper left. And it just comes right out. It's simple to clean. There's a little brush that comes with it. But do I, do I know where my brush is? No. You know, teenagers. I call it the Barbie brush or the doll brush. And so, just squeeze that out. Take any kind of a flat edge. Scrape it off if you don't have your brush. The brush is like pennies to replace. So, you can. I can always get another one. And I think I do have one. I think I have a whole new set. All right, is that one even worth it? No, that one I sliced with another slicer. Um, but I don't have the garlic slicer. I have like an old um, vegetable slicer. And I slice that up. So I'm gonna put that right on top. Pampered Chef has these handy um, gourmet salt and pepper shakers. And I believe we even sell the um, salt and pepper. This one's out. So Hayden, what'd you do with my pepper, my salt bib that you had this morning? Table. <laughs> all right, so that's all there is to it, and our potatoes are ready to go. We're going to put our silicone, um, I'm going to take it out of this bowl to make sure that the silicone on, lid on correctly. Nice grip. It has two holes for ventilation. Drop it right down in there. Now we're ready to go with that. Always put your um, stand in there for your bowl. You don't want your bowl sitting. And we'll cancel this. We'll drop this stand down inside, just over top of the meat, and then use this to lower it. If you are worried about getting burnt, I recommend these little ones. Yes, the fingertip ones will work too, but these little ones, um, make it a lot easier. These silicone pieces can fall into a boiling, if you're boiling corn, it can fall right down in the boiling water and um, come right back out and you can use it. So, let me push down my stand because I got a lot of fluid in there. And that is all it is. I'm using this to push it. Using my little silicone forget I call them little clippers you know there's a professional name for them of course and I'm going to turn the memory dial over to beef and pork it's one setting I'm going to um, add some time to it I'm going to go ahead and add about 40 uh, about 10 minutes to that last time um, I didn't do that and the meat didn't get quite done for me so I'm um, done enough and then I'm going to use the edge here and groove and match it up in all in one pot. Talk spoke to me. You turn it just like so. You move it from your cabinets. You don't want that steam coming out. Um, board will absorb all of that steam and become thick. And then you'll have to replace your cabinets. So we have the time. All right. And just hit play. I'm going to clean up my mess and get out. Um, we could have cold slaw. I don't know if we have any cold slaw um, and, and plates for our lunch. And I'll see you back in just a few. Welcome back to the kitchen. It's almost ready. I can hear the steam coming out. Um, it had beat to let me know that it had finished. And we had like three minutes. So then I just push the quick release button and if you push it hard enough, you don't have to stand there and hold it. If you wanted just to let it release naturally, it would. It would take about 10 to 15 minutes. The quick release takes about three to four minutes tops. I have two that would like to have barbecue and two that would like to have just the roast. So we're gonna do things a little bit different than maybe what you're gonna do in your kitchen. But in our syllable bowl, 
I'm going to um, take out the pieces of meat and lay in the bowl. And then I'll make my two plates that want a meat only. And then um, we're going to put on some barbecue sauce. And then um, put it in the oven. So I'm going to go ahead and set it to 350 degrees. Bake so that my oven preheats. The um, steam is about here. So it's about more, it's a little more than halfway done. Um, we're going to take a little scraper and we can just go underneath to make sure that it's getting out, coming out nicely and that we won't get burnt. Because if you touch the release knob with your fingers, you will get burnt at this point. That steam is um, way, way hot. It's hot enough to burn you probably give you a third degree burn. And I turned it away from my cabinets. The little red button will come up when it's ready for, to be opened. And it makes a little click. We are going to use um, a masher to mash our potatoes. And um, I'm gonna use this retired item, um, maybe to get out the meat. I may go back and use the salad tongs. Just kinda of have to wait and see. I'm gonna turn it just so it's easier, turn it closer to me. And that tells us it is ready to open. So we're gonna open it nice and slow and maybe um, towards the back in case there's steam that comes out. As you can see maybe the steam is coming out the back. And since it has water that's going to release, I will put the lid in the sink for now. I'm going to um, use a trivet, just a silicone mat from Pampered Chef. They're now gray. And I'm going to use the little um, has some nice soup on top. I'm going to drain it. I'm, um, I'm using my little pinchers. Okay, and we're going to lift up this whole pot together. And we're going to set it over here. It will cool. I'm going to see if I can get these. It has little grips right here that you can use your pinchers and just grip that. Make sure you release part way. And our potatoes look completely yummy. You can even take it over to the sink. And I think I will drain that just a hair. Maybe, maybe I'll have to get a strainer. We'll do that in a second. Next thing, I'm going to have to have my salad tongs to lift the stand out of the bottom. Lovely. Toss that in here. And the meat is falling off. So I'm just going to kind of place it back in like we had it before. Bread. Now, if you really wanted to make some uh, meat, we only used three pound roast. We could have used a six pound roast and had um, enough leftovers for, for another meal. And you can always um, use all the extra stock. You, you could put it in a, um, a syllable, um, another syllable, sil yeah syllable container um, from Pampered Chef and put that and we could use that when we want to use our cooker again because the broth is amazing in this pot with all of the vegetables and meat. We can use it as a beef broth for another recipe. I sometimes freeze it in a Coke bottle or a Pepsi bottle or whatever kind of bottle I have. Doesn't that look delicious? And the pan is not getting hot to my surprise. So I'm just going to take out a couple pieces of, of meat just to um, 
for the teenagers that I have. Is that good, Hayden? Yep. And I'm going to, I think I us try this masher and see if it separates the meat for us. Oh, nicely, nicely, nicely. Another thing that you can use, I don't even want to know what you're doing over there on the side, Hayden. And then the mix and chop even works. If you don't have a mix and chop in your kitchen, that is a must. If you have some um, a wedding that uh, you need a prize or you know a gift for, the uh, kits and utensils are great for that. Awesome! That looks so delicious. So delicious. Smells amazing. Smells really good. That is going to be enough for quite a few sandwiches. And I just want to use just a little bit of this sweet honey um, barbecue. Might have to get out a good old steak knife or something to cut that open with. Because I'm a weakling. <laughs> Give it to Hayden. He'll open it for me. We do have a bottle opener. Uh, Pepper Chef makes a bottle opener. And I'm just going to spread this out on top. And then I'm going to take my basting, my ba basting brush and baste it. Make sure I just kind of get it even. Mm. And then this kind of makes it just even on top. Okay. Stir it in a little bit. Delicious. Delicious. Lip smacking good. Okay, and then I stirred it nicely with the braising brush so you know that that is good meat when you do that. Okay, put a little bit on top just so that it browns nicely. Okay, like that. I'm gonna put it in. And I have some picky teens. So, they, they want just some roasted potatoes, some nice steamed potatoes. And they'll probably have mashed potatoes as well. That looks pretty. They're all different. Okay, so I'm going to add some heavy cream. I don't really have a measuring for this. I'm just going to add a little bit. Of heavy cream. I'm gonna just pinch off about a fourth of a thing of butter. Wipe off my masher. And go to town mashing. If I have too much heavy cream, I guess I'll just have to dump it out. I think I'm gonna have to use this because the bowl is still pretty hot. I've never tried the mix and chop with the potatoes. I know it works well with meat. Now they're setting up nicely. Mashed potatoes are mixing with that heavy cream. I'm gonna have to put some pepper in there and a little bit of salt. The skin off the potatoes makes it a little chunky. I love that. Mm, mm, mm. Tip it up, maybe you can see it. You can also add some cheese and some chives, which I might do. I have some cheese and I have some chives, but for right now, um, I'll have to do that to my own. Uh, my family likes theirs pretty plain. So that is all she wrote on that. Now let's check the oven and see about our yummy barbecue. Hand me that plate over yonder, Hayden. Mmm, looks good. Mm hmm looks yummy, yummy for our tummy. Let me see. Another little. Let's use a serving fork. Man, that looks delicious. That looks amazing.
open face barbecue. And mashed potatoes. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope this is something you would make for your family to eat for dinner or for lunch. And if you found any product here that you would like more information about, leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos that will be coming out. Check us out on Facebook as well. We have a Healthy Believers group and we would surely like to add, add you in that group. We also have a blog and we'll put all that information down in the description part of this video. Have a good day. May God bless you.